hi guys welcome back to anatomy with victor in today's video we'll be looking at the anatomy of the brachial plexus okay so the brachial plexus is that network of nerve fibers that supplies the upper limb and the shoulder regions okay so this brachial plexus they originate from the uh, spinal nerves of the cervical vertebrates okay so they start from the c5 till c1 vertebrate okay so Come with me, so let's explore what we can be able to see here in this cadaveric study. Okay, so as we say that the brachial plexus originates or starts from the anterior remine of C5, C6, C7, C8, and first thoracic nerve. Okay, so uh, this plexus of nerves here, they emerge from two muscles. This one here is called the anterior scaling muscle, and the one posterior it is called the uh, middle scaling muscle. So the space between the anterior scaling muscle and the middle scaling muscle is called the interscaling space. So this interscaling space accommodates neurovascular structures such as the root of the brachial plexus, the subclavian artery, and the subclavian vein, which we have dissected out of this uh, uh, interscaling space. Okay, so let's look at this root again. So we have this one here called the C5 and C6 ventral remi. They fuse together and form what we call the superior trunk. Okay, the C5, the C6 fuse together and form what we call the superior trunk. Okay, so the C5, C6, the C7 alone does not fuse with any other brachial plexus. It continues alone to become what we call the middle trunk. Okay, so we have the C8 and T1. They fuse together to form what we call the inferior trunk, also known as the, um, the lower trunk. Okay, now there are branches that we cannot be able to explore here, which is... A union of fibers that originate from the C5, C6, C7 to form a nerve fibers that we cannot be able to see here, which is called the long thoracic nerve. So this long thoracic nerve runs down to supply a muscle here, lateral to the uh, the coastal region, which is called the uh, serratus anterior muscle. Okay, so the long thoracic nerve runs anterior to this muscle here called the long thoracic nerve to supply the muscle here called the serratus anterior muscle. Okay, so before then, there's another nerve again here that runs uh, on the um, on C5 cervical vertebrae. That nerve is called the dosal scapular nerve. Okay, the dosal scapular nerve. So the dosal scapular nerve supplies the muscle that is called the levator scapulae muscle and the rhomboid minor and rhomboid major muscles. Okay, and uh, that junction between the C5 and C6, there's a nerve here. So this particular nerve here, this one here, is called the suprascapular nerve. So this suprascapular nerve, it runs. Uh, medially and then pierced the trapezius muscle and enter through a, a foramen called the uh, suprascapular notch so this it, it transverses the suprascapular notch and then found themselves it, it's been located at the posterior surface of the scapula where they've entered into what we call the supraspinatus fossa and it supplies the muscle locating within the supraspinatus fossa and they also wing around the um, spine of the scapula and where they then terminate to form, to, to enter into the infraspinatus fossa, okay? So let me bring a model of the scapula to explain what I explained now, okay? Okay, so what I was saying before is that this particular nerve here called the suprascapular nerve, they pierces the muscle here. So this muscle here is called the trapezius muscle. Okay, so this trapezius, this nerve here pierces this, uh, the trapezius muscle, then transverse within this notch here. This notch here is called the suprascapular notch. Okay, so once it transverse through the suprascapular notch, so this area of the scapula here is called the supraspinatus fossa. 
Okay, so it enters into the supraspinatus fossa. There is a muscle, a group of muscle here, which is called the supraspinatus muscle. So the non transverse this spine here is called the spine of the scapula. The non transverse this spine here and terminate on this fossa here. So this fossa here again is called the infraspinatus fossa, and there is the dominant muscle within this fossa, which is called infraspinatus. Muscle. So they supply basically the supraspinatus muscle and infraspinatus muscle. Okay, so let's go back to our cadaver to see what we can see in the rest of the brachial plexus. Okay, so this is the middle trunk. C7 continues alone. It does not unite with any other person. It continues to become the middle trunk. Okay, now we now have the next root here, which is called the C8 and the T1. So the C8 here and the T1 here unite to form what we call the inferior trunk or the lower trunk. So this is the lower trunk. This is the C8 and this is the first thoracic vertebrae, which is the T1, to form what we call the lower trunk or the inferior trunk. Okay, so superior to the clavicle. So the superior to the clavicle, this trunk now divide into divisions. Okay, they now divide into divisions. So, so let's look at what we can see here. Remember, we say that this is the trunk, inferior trunk. So it forms the anterior division, and the one below here is called the posterior division. So we have another one here, which is the middle trunk the middle trunk okay okay can you see so this is the middle trunk here this is the middle trunk okay so the middle trunk now form what we call the anterior division and the one below here which is the posterior division okay so we have the superior trunk here so this is the superior trunk So this is the superior trunk. So the superior trunk now form what we call the posterior division. So the superior trunk forms the anterior division and posterior division. Do you get? This is the superior trunk forming anterior division and posterior division. Okay? So Okay, so let me quickly recap the divisions again. Okay, we said that this is the inferior trunk, this is the middle trunk, and this is the superior or upper trunk, okay? So, superior to the clavicle, we have the divisions, where the inferior trunk forms anterior division, which is behind the subclavian artery, which is anterior division and posterior division. Okay? So this middle, middle trunk here now form, form posterior division and anterior division. Posterior division and anterior division. Superior trunk now form posterior division and anterior division. Like we said, all the whole posterior division, the posterior division of the superior trunk posterior division of the middle trunk and posterior division of the inferior trunk forms what we call the posterior cord. Anterior division of the superior trunk, anterior division of the middle trunk form what we call the lateral cord. Why the inferior division, anterior division of the anterior division of the middle trunk continues alone to form what we call the 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 medial cord. Okay, so then when the brachial plexus now bypass the, the clavicle and enter into the axilla, they are being wrapped by axillary sheets. The, that is where they started giving off branches. Okay, so let's quickly explore the branches that we can see within the axilla of the brachial plexus. So, like we said, this is the lateral cord. So, let's look at the branches we can see of the la lateral cord. Firstly, we are going to see this one here. So, this is called the musculocutaneous nerve. Okay, unfortunately, the musculocutaneous nerve is torn. So how do we know that this is the musculocutaneous nerve? From where it is turned, so it is joined here. So this musculocutaneous nerve, 
pierces a muscle here. So this muscle here is called the coracobrachialis muscle, a muscle of the anterior compartment of the arm. So it pierces the coracobrachialis muscle to supply the muscles of anterior compartment of the arm. So after piercing the coracobrachialis muscle, it runs in between this muscle here called the bicep brachii muscle, the, the short head and the long head muscles of bicep brachii muscle. So when we flip this uh, bicep brachii, we see the musculocutaneous nerve running to supply these muscles, okay? So it also have what we call the muscular component and the sensory component. So they also give a muscular supply to the muscles of the anterior compartment, such as the bicep brachii, both, um, both the, the long head and the short head, as well as supplying this muscle here as well that originate from the coracoid process, which is also called the, which is called the coracobrachialis muscle, which the pierce is to enter in between this uh, muscles as well. So they also supply this muscle that is located distal to the humerus here, which is called the brachialis muscle. Okay? So this musculocutaneous nerve later continues to become what we call the most uh, mid lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which continues to supply the lateral, the lateral aspect of the forearm. So let's go back to other branches that we can see the lateral roots because it's coming from the lateral cord. So it is called the lateral root of the median nerve. Okay. So this one is now called the median root of the median nerve which together unites to form what we call the median nerve. So we are going to still come back to this one, but just know that the lateral cord has a root here, which is called the, the lateral root of the median nerve. And this one is called the median root of the, mid, of the median cord. Okay? So these are the two branches that we can visualize within this dissection. So let's go to uh, branches coming from the, the media cord. Okay? So why do we know that this is um, the the lateral cord this is the media cord and this is the posterior cord so there is a landmark here which is the subclavian artery so the subclavian artery is telling us that anything lying posterior to the axillary artery is the posterior cord anything lying lateral to axillary artery here is the lateral cord anything lying medially to the axillary artery which the subclavian artery here is the the media cord let me repeat again so we know that this is the posterior cord because it is lying posterior to this subclavian artery or the axillary artery okay because it is lying uh, inferior it is lying in posterior to the axillary artery, uh, subclavian artery okay and it is la this cord, lateral cord here, is lying lateral to this subclavian artery. Why this media cord here is lying media to this axillary artery, okay, subclavian artery as well, okay. So let's look at the branches that we can see within the media cord, okay. So this is the median cord. So the first branch we are going to see is this one here that is called the median roots of the median nerve. So the median roots of the median nerve and the lateral roots of the median nerve come together here and they form a kind of V-shaped structure to form what we call this nerve called the median nerve. So this is one of the branches of the median nerve. It is called the median root of the median nerve. So let's look at another branch again. So the next branch we are going to see is this one which is the terminal branches of the median cord. So this is called the ulna nerve. Okay? The ulna nerve. So when we go more medial, we see another nerve here. So this one is called the median cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So we have this one here which is called the median cutaneous nerve of the forearm that supplies the media aspect of the forearm that give a sense to our media aspect of our forearm that supplies the skin of the forearm. So there are other groups of branches coming from the media cord, such as the media pectoral nerve that supplies the pectoralis minor and pectoralis major, which we cannot be able to visualize here. Okay. So let's go to the branches of the posterior cord. Okay, which lies posterior to the subclavian artery. Okay or posterior to the axillary what, artery, okay? So these branches are, you can remember these branches by staying the stars, okay? Firstly, we have the first one, which is the upper sub, subscapular artery, so upper subscapular nerve. So when you look at these two nerves, you see that there's one upper here, nerve here, and, okay, let me, 
to remove that so you can be able to visualize that okay so we have the first one which is called the upper subscapular nerve okay so this is the upper subscapular nerve so this upper subscapular nerve supplies a muscle that is found uh on subscapularis what fossa so let me bring a model to show you subscapular fossa so that we can see where this upper subscapular nerve supplies okay so this is a model here showing a scapula so this area of the scapula here is called the subscapular fossa so there is a dominant muscle here which is called subscapularis muscle one of the muscles of the seat muscle okay so this upper and lower subscapula nerve supplies this muscle here called the subscapularis what muscle located in this fossa called the subscapularis fossa Okay, so we have seen this one here called the upper subscapularis nerve and the lower subscapularis nerve. So there are other group, another nerves here that we cannot visualize here, which is the dosa scapular nerve. Okay, then there is another nerve coming from the um, posterior cord, which is this one here. This one here is called axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. Okay, so this axillary nerve pierces the axillary fold. Okay, and then supplies the it has a sensory sens uh, sensor, sensory innervation and motor innervations okay so they give sensory innervations to the area of our deltoid muscle so this muscle here uh, the one of the site of mus uh, intermuscular injection is called the deltoid muscle so this axillary, axillary nerve gets into the uh uh surgical neck of the humerus here where it gives rise to different branches like anterior branches uh posterior branches and articular branches and the amazing thing here is that this uh, axillary nerve here this axillary nerve later continues to become the lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm so it gives sensation to our lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm okay then let's quickly look at the um uh okay so the last terminal branches of the posterior cord is this one here called the radian nerve okay one of the biggest branch of the brachial plexus and the biggest among the posterior cord which is the radian nerve so this radian nerve enters into the uh, posterior compartment of the arm and runs within the uh, uh, the radian groove of the humerus to supply the muscles of the posterior compartment which are the triceps muscles okay so the other terminal branches as well we have seen here first one is the musculocutaneous nerve musculocutaneous nerve the second one is the axillary nerve the axillary nerve we see another one the radial nerve we see this one here from the media cord which is the mid uh ulnar nerve and we see the two union here the median roots of the median nerve and the lateral roots of the median nerve so that continues to form what we call the the median nerve okay so there are many clinical considerations within this um brachial plexus okay so people can have injury or trauma to this brachial plexus okay so we mentioned that they have there are abnormalities we mentioned firstly the Ebb's palsy where there is injury to the superior trunk which can result to numbness paralysis of all the branches that is being supplied by the branches of the uh, superior trunk and we also have another common abnormality maybe there is an injury or tear of this uh, inferior trunk so this abnormality within the inferior trunk is called the clump case palsy which can result to paralysis of the muscles of the hand in which the inner nerve is being supplied so this can be able to tell us where and what it is where there is a lesion in the brachial plexus by the presentation of paralysis of any region that a particular nerve is being supplied so this abnormality is common in child birth it is as a result of trauma and different abnormalities see you in the next video